Today on No Panic Pantry, we are taking a journey to Salad Town. We're gonna make three different types of salad dressing today to show you kind of uh, that you don't need to buy dressing unless it's Paul Newman's because he's great. Click here to watch Color of Money. We're gonna make kind of a classic mustard shallot vinaigrette. We're gonna make the one that I actually make for the most part, which is usually just, I squeeze lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper, maybe a little splash of tamari. And then we'll make kind of a kitchen sink chopped salad. This is gonna be for the mustard shallot vinaigrette. One of the cool things about washing lettuces or really any greens is the greens float and the dirt sinks to the bottom. We're gonna go with a three to one ratio. So that's uh, three parts oil to one part uh, acid. Today, if we're gonna use a red wine vinegar, we only need like a tablespoon or so of minced shallot. At some point on this show, I should bring in like a knife skills expert to teach me better chopping technique. Handy dandy mason jar. These are great because you can make dressing in it and then just close it up and you got dressing. So take our shallot, this is actually a decent amount of shallot, put him right in here. Dijon mustard, Eliza doesn't like Dijon mustard. She says she doesn't like it, don't use it, hates it, don't put it in anything, but I put it in this dressing all the time and she loves it. Don't put it in Dijon mustard. It's not. Nice little dab, this is probably what, a couple of teaspoons. Some black pepper, I like a decent amount of black pepper in here. Some salt, we got our quarter cup of red wine vinegar. We've got our olive oil, so watch. When this comes up to a cup, then we know that we're correct. Three quarter plus three one quarters is a cup. This is pouring very slowly. Three to one. Bing, bang, boom. That's what they say in the, is bing, bang, boom. My brother pointed this out to me that usually when you buy a mason jar, it comes with little metal ringlets, but you can buy these ones. Washable, reusable, dishwasher safe, leak proof, and we don't want like a full like emulsification. We just want to shake it up just like that. And now you got a mustard shallot vinaigrette. So meanwhile, this is now clean. Let's make my wife some eggs. Tiny splash of milk or cream is a very nice thing in a scrambled egg. Just a touch. Butter in a pan. This moving around, nice and gentle, nice low heat. This is maybe the worst thing anyone's ever made on a cooking show. Some people say you wanna like dress the side of the bowl and toss it and put it in. I just try to put the amount in that actually belongs in it. That looks like a real fancy breakfast. Dear, would you like to eat this on camera? I'm gonna look back at this and regret appearing on camera on natural. This is really about the shallot mustard vinaigrette. This is like, oh, it's not about the omelet? You're supposed to try the salad. Okay. People don't talk about the value of a breakfast salad. This is like a winemaker's lunch. You wanna eat like this with like, a glass of wine. You wanna eat like a vinter. And like some saute champignon. This is delicious. Great. How often do you get greens in the morning? You know? A lot when you're me. I put them in a smoothie a lot. I'm just glad you made this dressing without Dijon. <laughs> like I always ask. All right, so now here's the salad that I actually make for myself most of the time. If I just want to throw together a quick salad, some lettuces washed and dried. I'll go like danger zone down the middle. This is the, this is like the truth of how I actually cook at home. Got a couple of snap peas. I just take the little, the little zipper. I'll literally just like cut these in half and throw them in. I got an avocado from the farmer's market. Rather than like cut it into a dice and try to do it fancy, I just take a spoon and just take little slices out that way and knock them right in there. I take a lemon, I'll cut it usually in my hand so I don't have to use a cutting board. Keeping your hand under it to catch the juice, squeeze it in, take some olive oil, you're still kind of eyeballing a three to one and just do it so it looks right. If you're nervous about this process, go light and then add more as you go along. And then my secret weapon is a little splash of tamari. That's probably like a tablespoon. But some pepper, if you want to get fancy, you could use fancy salt, a little pinch of that. Sometimes for a little extra umami slammer, 
I'll take some Parmesan cheese and grate that in too. So you got lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper, tamari, Parmesan, and it becomes this like deeply satisfying, pretty darn healthy salad. There's no sugar in it, a little fat to make it nice. Give it a nice toss. And this is kind of a perfect salad now. You get a little bit of creaminess from the avocado. You get some bright vegetal crunch from the cucumbers. You just kind of throw it all together and you got like a perfect little at home, working, eating out of the mixing bowl salad. They say a chef salad is like croutons, cheddar cheese, cherry tomatoes, like corn. It's always like a weird selection. A real chef salad is whatever was lying around that I could grab and throw in. I've seen this salad before. I've made this many times. Mm. That's nicer than a chef salad, which normally has croutons, corn, whatever the chef has lying around. It's really good. Yeah. The main part of this is to talk about uh, the dressing itself. We did a three to one ratio on the mustard shallot vinaigrette. We did a just kind of squeeze it in there and see what happens on the actual chef salad. And then for this one, we're doing a, a one to one iceberg for some nice sweet crunch, arugula for some peppery roughage, and then radicchio for that kind of bitter element. And it gets you a nice little color. And then I'm also going to blanch some green beans. You know, a classic is you put uh, garbanzo beans in. Some people put in cannellini beans. I happen to have done an episode of the show recently in which we made uh, four million pounds of pinto beans. So I'm gonna put pinto beans in because I got them when they're cooked and why waste them? Uh, and you're gonna go, what a pinto bean? That's for Mexican food. But I'll bet, you know what? I'll bet it's fine. One to one ratio, fat to acid. But I love, on this one, I like to do a little combination of red wine vinegar and lemon juice. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a garlic clove. We're just gonna grate it right in there. One garlic clove, two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, which is the same as a quarter cup. Got a clove of garlic, quarter cup of olive oil. In this particular case, because it's gonna be a high acid dressing, I think a little squeeze of honey is a nice thing. Just a touch. A little pinch of Greek oregano, or if you have like that like Italian seasoning, and then our old friend, Dijon mustard. Little dabble do ya. And then, you know, we season it with salt and pepper. Give it the old college shake. Doesn't that just look like Italian dressing now? Yes. You might, when you taste it, go, ooh, that's punchy. Yeah, but the sweetness kind of rounds it out, a little bit of honey. Ooh, it's a nice dressing. There's two ways that I'm okay with the chopped salad. One is like a real nice fine chop, almost like a chop that you need to eat it out of a cereal bowl with a soup spoon. I love a chop like that. The other one is more of a Nancy Silverton chop. Click here to make a reservation to Osteria Mozza. Nancy Silverton did a chop that I think is kind of genius, which is not really a chop, it's more of a shred. So it's like long, thin strips, which is great. So when you take a bite, it all kind of picks up. So you have strips of salami, strips of like a sharp provolone or whatever it is. I'm gonna do a more of a fine chop. Uh, a good reference point, if you wanna think about how big your chops should be of your ingredients, uh, use the bean you're using. We're gonna use pinto bean today as your reference point. So you want everything to be kind of ideally the same size. Do you know that every chef on television when they describe arugula has to say that it's peppery? It's in your contract. Radicchio, you kind of want like a, like a one to one to one on this. And you have to assume that the more bitter and intense a vegetable is, the better it is for you. I feel like that's probably true. Radicchio in. And look, you could use romaine here. You could use any number of vegetables. Give it a little toss, give it a look. So you wanna be able to see a little bit of everything in the whole thing. I think we did a pretty good job of that. Celery. Got a stock of celery in there. Uh, another thing that's nice in a chopped salad is a little bit of parsley. I do sometimes have some pickled jalapenos around. Pinto beans, pickled jalapenos? What are you making, a Mexican salad? And I just, I'm just using ingredients, man. A little bit of pickled jalapeno just for a little pop and I chop it up pretty fine. Just a little, when you're cooking green vegetables, if you wanna blanch them, it's good to shock them after because it keeps them nice and bright, stops them from cooking. This is more than we need, but the truth is, I kinda like just blanching green beans and leaving them around and I'll just kinda snack on them. And this is a, a convenient little trick sometimes, like a ramen noodle boiler, so you can like drop things into like a little batch of noodles, but it's great for blanching something quickly. Pasta, you wanna salt like a nice broth, but when you're blanching, you want to salt it like the sea because you're only getting a, it in there for a minute. So 
Well, let's just go crazy. There's not enough water in here. There should be more water in here. But we're just getting a little quick cook on this. We don't want that much. And then, boom. Throw a little cucumber in there too while we got it lying around, right? Grab one of our pinto beans. All right, salami going in. We added more green things to this. A little vinaigrette. Toss, toss. A little cheese can be nice. Lately, I've actually been on a little bit of a sharp white cheddar kick. A little black pepper on top is always a nice thing. I'm gonna eat it with a spoon. Mmm, it's bright, it's crunchy, it's got like acid, it's got the garlic in there to give it that little, that little zing, but then you get the fat from the cheese and the cheese is sharp and you get lots of vegetables in there. This is my kind of a chop. It's got beans, it's got a little bit of meat in there, it's got all this kind of stuff. You get this sort of complete meal of a salad but with a lot of zing and pep to it. That's our show. We made salad.